happy International Education Week 2020. My name is Melissa Tolentino and I work with the Fulbright Program at the U.S. Department of State. We're excited to celebrate the benefits of international exchange and education worldwide. The State Department has various programs that prepare Americans for a global environment and attract future leaders from abroad to study, learn, and exchange experiences. Today I'll be talking with alumna Janae Nurse about her experience in South Africa as a Fulbright English Teaching Assistant, or Fulbright ETA, which is one of the components of the Fulbright U.S. Student Program. Before we start, I'd like to give a brief overview of the Fulbright Program. For nearly 75 years, the Fulbright Program, which is the flagship international educational exchange program sponsored by the U.S. government, has fostered mutual understanding between U.S. citizens and the citizens of other countries. Nearly 400,000 Fulbrighters from the United States and other countries have participated in the program since 1946. And Fulbright supports approximately 8,000 grants annually across 160 countries worldwide. Fulbright offers programs for passionate and accomplished students, scholars, artists, teachers, and professionals of all backgrounds to study, teach, or conduct research abroad. If you're interested in the program, I encourage everybody to visit eca.state.gov slash Fulbright to learn more about the many opportunities available. You can also ask questions in the chat or search for Fulbright plus your occupation or field of study in any search engine. Hello everyone, my name is Janae Nurse. I was a Fulbright ETA to South Africa in the 2018-2019 award year. I currently am in Virginia and I work in state level education policy. So for the first question, um, I want to talk a little bit about what your journey to Fulbright was and what made you decide to apply. So I actually kind of had an untraditional journey to Fulbright. Um, I actually began, I guess I would say my career in international education as a teacher, an English teacher at a school in Morocco. And, you know, it was a pretty well-resourced, high-end international um, school. And so I had a great time there. I loved it. I really didn't know that I had it in me to live and work somewhere abroad. Um, I had studied abroad in college, but I only did like our J term programs, which were these two week programs over winter break. And so I had never really taken this leap. And so when I went to Morocco, I really loved it. And it inspired me to seek out opportunities to do similar types of work, but also with children that needed a little bit more help, students that didn't have access to the same types of resources. Um, and so I sought out the Fulbright program and I actually did it after I graduated college, after I had a master's degree and after I had worked for a full year and I actually joined the Fulbright program um, in my post-grad experience, whereas most people do it right out of undergrad. Yeah, that's a really important thing to note that, you know, a lot of people think you have to go into Fulbright right after you graduate from undergrad, but you can actually do it after grad school, while you're doing your PhD. Um, so, you know, Fulbright is not just for one period in your life. It can be done at any time. You know, I believe that it added to my experience because I had this classroom experience. While to be an ETA, you don't need to be a teacher or have experience teaching. It really is something that was able to inform some of my work in country. And so I really appreciated that and was able to use it. And so I just challenge people to think big. Um, how can you apply the experiences that you have to any type of international exchange? Definitely. Um, so you, so you're currently a Fulbright U.S. Student Alumni Ambassador. Um, so, you know, Fulbright has obviously had a big impact on your life, you know, professionally and personally. Can you talk more about how your experience kind of influenced your career choices and, you know, how you are as a person today? Fulbright had a major impact on where I am right now in life. I don't know if it's so easy to see that when you first join the program, how much it will have an influence on you, but it really, really does. And so actually during my Fulbright, this was the first time when I had extra free time. Think about it. Most people applying for a program like this, they're probably pretty ambitious people. They're probably we have a five-year plan, a 10-year plan, all of those things. And so the obligation of the Fulbright program when you're in country, I believe it's about a 16-hour per week commitment. And so you kind of have this extra time. And I had been so used to cramming my life with extracurriculars, volunteer experiences, work, studying. And so here I was with this chunk of free time. And at first, it made me very uncomfortable. But what it did, as I was experiencing this new 
culture, this new country and learning new things, different ways of doing things, I didn't always agree with them. They didn't always match up to my own ideologies or my values. And so that's okay. That's a part of stepping into somebody else's world. And for me, though, I wanted to always be at a point of critical reflection. And so as I was seeing some things that maybe I didn't love, I was thinking, how can I have an impact? How can I make a difference without trying to be the problem solver, so to speak? It pushed me to seek out opportunities to learn more. And actually, while I was in country, I ended up applying to a graduate program, an online one at Johns Hopkins, to get my certification in school administration. The work I'm doing now at the Department of Education here in um, Virginia, it really is informed by some of the experiences that I had in South Africa and just some of the things that I saw, wanting to really guarantee that students have access to a high quality education, no matter what their background is, no matter where they come from, no matter the language is spoken at home, and really seeking, you know, to make that my life's work. Because I really believe in the transformative power of education. So if you could describe your Fulbright experience in just one word, what what would it be? That's a hard one, but I think that I would describe Fulbright as transformational. And I say that because it impacts every part of who you are. Not only are you moving all across the world, for me it was about 8,000 miles, but you're immersing yourself into somebody else's culture, into their ways of doing things. Not only are you living there, but you're working there in this new context. And so it challenges you in ways that you wouldn't even expect. But I would also say that it shows you just who you are. I would say overall, it just made me a more aware and attentive person. For all of the people who are listening right now or everybody who's going to be watching this in the future, for any people out there who want to apply to Fulbright, what advice would you give them? Prestigious programs like Fulbright can be extremely intimidating. Um, but what I've learned in being a part of the program and now as alum, an alumni ambassador is that we really want all different types of perspectives. When we're sending people out to represent this country, we want to show them all that we have to offer. So for me, it was important to kind of push down the imposter syndrome of you can't do this, you don't belong. You know, just thinking about my upbringing and some of those things, I, I just didn't know if, if this was the place for me. But what I realized is this is the place for everyone. You really don't have anything to lose and you have so much to gain. Janae, every time we do something like this for Fulbright, we're gonna call you. <laughs> Listen, I love when y'all call me. <laughs> you know, so I loved it. It, it really leaves an impressionable mark on you. Like you don't forget those things and it, it really does just make you a better person. I think that you have to listen better. You have to understand better. You have to put yourself in other people's shoes. Um, and I think that'll make us all better people. It was really important to me to make these lasting connections. And so, you know, I check in with some of my old students, um, many of the friends that I made in South Africa, they're still checking in when a lot of the things were going on here with the protests um, because of George Floyd, the killing of innocent Black people, to really connect people on a personal and a deep level so that you can understand, you know, this place that we call the United States and so that we can better understand South Africa. When I first was teaching, you know, my biggest goal was to bring as many international experiences into my classroom as possible. I was teaching kids that did not necessarily have access to travel or know people in their communities that were doing that kind of thing. I was that kid. And so for me, I wanted to pay it forward. I wanted to show people, students, that they had access to the whole world and that, you know, that is their right as well. And that, you know, they have the right to experience all the beauty of this world in the same ways that, you know, some of their more privileged counterparts might have. And so that was my biggest thing when I was still in the classroom. Now, while I'm at the state level, you know, it's really about that equity. It's really about making sure that kids have the opportunities to be successful, to have these exchange experiences, even, you know, as, as little as middle and high school. And so it's something that I'm definitely carrying forward in the work that I do now. Hmm. And I will also say this for me, it was also kind of me proving to myself that I could do a hard thing. And by attaining a prestigious award, you know, it really was a confidence booster and that you belong here too. These are your opportunities too. And it's kind of reassuring that 
so many people that I have spoke to as an ambassador of just, I'm so scared to apply to Fulbright. I don't think I have the GPA. I don't think I had the extracurricular experiences to really, you know, make me a competitive applicant. And, you know, you wouldn't believe how many times I'm convincing people to apply. Just do it. Um, your story will speak for itself. And we really just want to see you and who you are. It, because at the end of the day, you're just representing a piece of this American puzzle. Right. And we all play an important role. And people need to know that their stories are valuable, they're important, and they matter. This is the type of thing that I love. And, and it really is, Melissa, because I want people to have access to this program. And I think about what I'm doing with my equity work now at the Department of Education, and it's about, you know, increasing opportunity for students. And that's, that's what's going to close achievement gaps, right? And so... If we're, we start talking about things like Fulbright in high school, kids already have their mindset on it. You already start to, th you meet somebody like me that's from your neighborhood, from your area that did a Fulbright, and now all of a sudden it seems attainable. Yeah. And so it really is about representation and visibility. So that's the end of our time today. I want to thank Janae so much for this discussion, and thank you to everybody who tuned in today for joining us. Please be sure to share what you plan to do for International Education Week 2020 on social media using the hashtag IEW2020. Bye.